Hi, I'm Mary Vieira, and this is the Reading Exchange. Today, we are at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. We're having a conversation with Dr. George Derek Musgrove, history professor here, and also the author of Rumor of Repression and Racial Politics. Today, we're with us today. Thank you for having me. Yes, the Reading Group is uh, happy to have you. We have a lot to cover. Your book is a little dense, <laughs> not a little, but it's a lot dense. And uh, you can want to be sure that people understand what you're trying to accomplish with the book. And um, I'm particularly interested in the relationship with the media mm -hmm. um, and um, how the media plays or played a large role in the harassment of black elected officials during the time period that you studied. Mm -hmm. And then how we can um, make correlations with what's happening today. Um, so let's start with, let's start from the beginning and tell us a little bit about what compelled you to write the book. Sure. I, I started the book because I wanted to understand my own time. I wanted to understand what black folks' relationship to the state was after the civil rights movement and the black power movements were over. Uh, and I started off doing a, a book on uh, black politics in Baltimore. And when I interviewed a couple of people, they kept saying, look, I've been harassed. It ended my political career. You've got to look into this. And it turns out they were some of the most prominent anti-harassment activists in the country yeah. uh, in the 1980s and 1990s. So I looked into it, and it was so interesting that I ended up with this book. You find your way through all of the resources. Yeah, that, that's actually how it happened. I, I interviewed a core group of about five people who were some of the most prominent uh, folks who had, had organized around issues of harassment. And then I said, at the end of the, every single interview, who would you recommend that I go speak to? And they'd give me a list, and I'd interview those few folks and say, who would you recommend I go speak to? And they'd give me a list. And in the end, I interviewed about 45 people, 28 of them members of Congress, uh, a bunch of elected officials in Alabama. Uh, and that was the basis of my oral histories. I layered on top of that newspaper coverage, a uh, tremendous amount of newspaper coverage. And then on top of that, uh, congressional reports and FBI reports, uh, which were much harder to get, but they were well worth the wait. The book really does justice to the research that you've done. Um, tell me about the term harassment and you know how you guys were able to nail down this harassment ideology and, and, and put it all together. Sure. The, the term harassment is really a catch-all term that black elected officials used from roughly the mid-1970s all the way up through the mid-1990s. And so it was handed to me. It wasn't a term that I created. Uh, I use the term harassment ideology to explain how I'm using it in the book. Uh, black elected officials, when they say the word harassment, they are making the case that the government is out to get them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so sometimes that's true. In fact, much of the time that's true, uh, but not always. And so sometimes a black elected official is say, saying, I'm being harassed, and they're not. They're, they're essentially trying to cover for something that they had done wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, so in order to communicate that to the reader, I use the term harassment ideology. Mm -hmm. And it's the idea that black elected officials create and try to spread to the general population that the government is out to get black leadership mm. and that they at that moment are being targeted. Mm -hmm. This victim mentality, it, it works both ways. It, it's a double-edged sword. You feel like you know, you're the victim and then you, you use it to your advantage when it's appropriate. Precisely. I mean, you know, the black population, which had you know, been raised on ideas of the Ku Klux Klan, COINTELPRO through the FBI, Martin Luther King being targeted by J. Edgar Hoover, and black elected officials say, I'm being targeted by the government, that resonates. And it resonates not just in the historical black imagination, but in a lot of black folks every day. I mean, police brutality, um, disproportionate policing, all of those are part of a lot of black folks' everyday experience. So talk to me about how this movement started and why the time period is so critical for studying harassment of black elected officials. Um, sure. No, it's an excellent question. Um, the first instances that I record in the book of black elected officials claiming that the government is out to get them are in 1966 and 1967. The ones in 66 are made by Julian Bond, who uh, is just elected to the Georgia State Legislature. And he makes a statement right before he's supposed to be sworn in against the Vietnam War. Uh, and almost all of his white colleagues in the Georgia Legislature basically get together and vote to deny him his seat, claiming that he's being treasonous because he uh, criticized the Vietnam War. But many of them are voting because he's black and they don't want him in there. And this was a great reason to, uh, to make that move. Right. 
Um, at the very same time, literally the day he's seated, because the Supreme Court essentially overrules the legislature and gets him in there, mm -hmm. um, Adam Clayton Powell is kicked out under, of the House of Representatives under similar circumstances. And so they make the first claims of harassment. And you hear claims here and there throughout the late 60s, early 70s. But the first time somebody takes all those claims and puts them into a book or a report is in 1967. A, man, a woman by the name of Mary Sawyer does that. And at that point, I, I argue that harassment ideology is born because these ideas that the government is out to get black elected officials and black leaders are out there from the mid-60s all the way up through the mid-70s. But the first time someone puts them down in a report is 1977. And that's done primarily because the, the population is finding out about what exactly happened with COINTELPRO and with Watergate and with the FBI targeting of the black freedom movement um, right in the mid-70s when there are all these congressional investigations that are putting out reports saying, oh yeah, J. Edgar Hoover tried to have Martin Luther King to, to kill himself. Right. Oh yeah, Patrice Lumumba is in, Patrice Lumumba's assassination is in some way connected to the CIA. Right. And black folks are reading this and saying, okay, look, these folks are out to get us. It's right. documentable. And buried in those reports are similar moves against black elected officials by the intelligence community, by the police. Black folks see that, and all of a sudden they can document an idea that they've had for a long time.